Okay, I'm going to give this camera setup a shot. Today, I'm going to try to sacrifice this drill to rescue this drill. So what happened was last year when I was building my shed, I thought I had this drill covered up. It got rained on and it quit working. So it is completely done for. This drill is fine. It's just super underpowered and I never use it. I mean, when I, I even, when I try to drill wood with it, you know, it chips it all up just because it goes too slow. It does not drill fast enough for what I need. So I'm willing to sacrifice this guy so this guy can live. And I'm going to attempt to do that today. So I'll pull the batteries out. Get my handy dandy little tool set here and try to find the right bits to work with these. I think they're like little torque screws in there. And try to keep an eye on my camera. It's kind of got a janky setup up there. It's hanging from a conduit from the ceiling and uh, not very well at that. So if it starts to drift, hopefully I'll catch it in time. If not, you might have to see a crooked angle. Okay, I got my <clears throat> got my bit and my screwdriver. I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna start disassembling these guys. It's gonna take some time, so uh, I'll just do this off camera, and then I'll hop back on when I'm ready to do something else. Okay, so for the most part I got all the screws out of them. <clears throat> There's one screw that just hanging out in there, but it'll come out eventually. Now, the way that they build these is the two molded pieces come together, the clamshell or whatever you want to call it, and then they use these steel clips right here to hold it together on the back side while they screw everything together. And so I'm going to have to pull that out. Hopefully it doesn't go flying across the room. Well, it tried to, but I got it right there. <clears throat> All right, two for two. Let's see if I can crack these suckers apart without losing everything inside them. I did a little research before I started this video <clears throat> and there are some slight variations between these two these two circuit board switch assemblies it's all one assembly I'll try to pull one out here all right I need to disconnect the light I don't know if you can tell this in the video, but the motor in this guy is much beefier than the motor in this guy. The switch assembly is exactly the same. The circuit board is similar, but I don't think it's the same. I don't know. They do look the same. The only difference Okay, so the only difference is this connector, let me see if I can zoom you in without messing up the view. Give it a second. Okay, so this connector here is soldered onto the circuit board. Behind it, you really can't see it, but there's a couple of solder pads. Conversely, on the drill, you have the open pads where the socket goes 
and then where there were open pads on the other drill there is a small LED so loss I mean if I really wanted to I guess I could solder that thing on there I don't know if I want to get that deep but all this tells me is that it's interchangeable I'm happy about that hey you tell me can you tell the difference between the two this is actually the bad one right here. You can see, maybe, you can see where the uh, there's been some corrosion from water exposure. The heat sink on this guy is a little bit bigger, but that's also stabilization of the circuit board. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's there for heat sink, but I can pull those off. I can swap those out. If I flip them up on end, you can see the uh, LED connector on this guy. If I can get it to the focus. And then there's the LED on this guy. I may try to swap those two out. Okay, well, I'm terrible at soldering, but I was at least able to desolder the connector on the one circuit board and the LED on the other one. So here is the bare circuit board ready to receive the connector so I can transplant this trigger assembly into my good impact drill. Alright, so I soldered that connector onto the, uh, the drill circuit board. No bridging. I was actually pretty impressed because, like I said before, I'm really terrible at soldering. I just need more practice. But it's in there. I believe the polarity is correct. I guess we'll find out. Alright, time to transfer over these heat sinks. They've got some type of, um, it's almost like melted plastic over the ends. I know it's supposed to be like, a, act like Loctite. So I might have to figure out a way to scrape all that off before I can move these screws. That's the one I want. I gotta get this one off of this guy now and put this in its place. And number two. on here. Impact driver's heat sink and stabilizer bar, whatever else you want to call it, is now installed on the drill driver's circuit board and ready to be installed in the impact driver.
still have to cut these leads and solder them to the motor leads of the impact driver. I have probably put some heat shrink tubing on it to try to make it all nice and tidy. Alright, so I just covered the ends of the screws with super glue. It's probably not as good as whatever they were using, but it's going to have to be good enough for this. It's all about having the right tool for the job. I've got three soldering irons. This one is my nicest one, but didn't think it was getting hot enough. But the other two definitely aren't cutting it, so this one will have to do. When in doubt, use the blowtorch. Not too much. I think this heat shrink might be just a little too big for the wire gauge, but that's all I had. So, it'll have to do. All right, now we get to reassemble. I don't know, you think I should test it first? Probably should test it first. Squeeze this trigger in here and then I'll pop a battery in and see what we get. Yes! Awesome! Now I'm excited. And get this together the rest of the way and put this baby back to work. Alright, enough playing around. Diddy or Didney. Was I able to fit all those wires back in there without breaking anything and get all the pieces together and and get the lights to work and everything? Let's find out. So I'm pretty excited. I really do love this little drill. Um, I like it because it's great for what it's designed for. Um, and that's just smaller things. Like if, if I was building a deck and I needed to drive a bunch of three and a half inch screws, this could probably do it, but it probably wouldn't last long because it's a little 12 volt small battery. It won't last long. And that's what I have my DeWalt for. But this is perfect for driving you know, uh, pocket screws and, um, d you know, small screws into wood and everything like that. Perfect for that. So, very excited to have this back in my arsenal of tools and it will be used a lot again. As a matter of fact, I was using this to build the shed, um, so that's how useful this thing is. And I'm really glad that Bosch makes tools that are user serviceable. They didn't use any type of fancy um, fasteners or or any type of adhesives to hold this thing together to make it difficult to fix. It broke. I was able to fix it. Now let's take a look at the aftermath here. So here's the bench. Um, here's the carcass of the uh, sacrificial drill. 
and uh, it's fine. I'm not going to miss that drill one bit. I never used it anyway. Got a few soldering irons, a whole bunch of soldering stuff, and my small electronics kit. There's the old trigger assembly that I pulled out of the impact. So let me know what you think. These uh, drill sets, you know, they come in sets of two usually, and it's kind of nice that with uh, some small modifications you can steal the parts from one to resurrect the other. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for commenting and subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time.